Good evening, good evening. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another edition of Pro Wrestling Talk brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. So, New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion is now in the books. So, just wanted to go through and just give my thoughts on uh, uh, the outcomes of the matches and just talk about a couple of things that happened. Uh, go over the, the card. I uh, also will go over the, um, they announced the G1 Climax number 32 participants. And it is a big list. A really big list. Um, they also, apparently, United Empire had a special guest, which ended up being uh, welterweight boxer Jesse Vargas that accompanied the group. It seems. But yeah, and of course, the first match of the card involved United Empire, which was United Empire's Aaron Hanare, Francesco Akira, and TJP went up against Hiroyoshi Tenzan, Master Wado, and Ryusuke Takuchi. Um, for the opening match, it was actually pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, Jesse Vargas was there ringside pretty much cheering on United Empire and such but it was a pretty it was a pretty decent match it's a good decent match but um Aaron Hanare uh got the victory for United Empire uh pinning uh Hiroyoshi Tenzan after hitting the Ultima but pretty good match to kick off uh Dominion <clears throat> and I tell you Osaka, Osaka Joe Hall looked pack too that is that is a beautiful venue that is a very beautiful venue but I, I hope i got i get a chance to attend that but apparently the official attendance was 6068 people which um i'm pretty sure that's not the maximum attendance but i'm you know i'm thinking they still kind of have to limit it you know due to the you know pandemic and everything <clears throat> anyway moving on we had another six-man tag, which was Bullet Clubs, Taiji Ishimori, Ace Austin, El Fantasmo going up against uh, LIJ's Hiromu Takahashi, Tetsuya Naito, and Bushi. And despite on paper this being a pretty solid match, um, I felt like it could have been longer, but what ended up happening was pretty much the inevitable. Bushi taking the pin, eating the L for LIJ. And Phantasm El Phantasmo was the one that uh, sealed the deal for Bullet Club after hitting a CR2 on Bushi. <clears throat> it's kind of a bummer. Bushi's still my favorite LIJ member. I don't care what any of y'all say. He's still my favorite. <clears throat> Pardon me. We had a singles match. Between Toru Yano and Doc Gallows. Now, honestly, I mean, I didn't expect this matchup to last long. I mean, usually Tor Toru Yano matches don't last long. And this was nothing different. And sure enough, you know, we saw the shenanigans and such. And things ended up working out in Toru Yano's favor as he was able to, to get the roll up and pin Doc Gallows to get the victory. Not surprised that Toriano won this. I mean, he's the king of shenanigans. So, like I said, not a long match, but didn't expect it to be a long match. <clears throat> we had the never open weight six-man tag team titles on the line. As House of Tortures, Evil, Sho, and Yujiro Takahashi defended against Suzuki Guns, Zack Saber Jr., Yoshinobu, Ka Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and El Desperado. Oh man, and the action got started early. <clears throat> man, I was really, really hopeful that maybe perhaps Suzuki Gun could get those belts off of House of Torture, but it was not so. 
And of course, Sho, doing what he usually does ever since he turned heel, pretty much 90% of the time, cheats. And apparently had a loaded boot, took advantage of it against Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and then hit a shock arrow to retain the never open weight six man tag team titles. Which, I mean, <clears throat> House of Torture is a it's pretty much right now a subunit of Bullet Club. So I guess this is their way of keeping them legit by having them retain. But I, I don't like the group. Especially evil. <clears throat> uh, we had the IWGP tag team titles on the line as Chase Owens and Bad Luck Fale made their first defense against United Empires and former uh, tag champs, the Great O'Karn and Jeff Jeff Cobb. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. This was actually a really good match. Definitely enjoyed this match, especially the moments that had Bad Luck Fale and Jeff Cobb face off. And you know what? The outcome actually made sense, especially what they have Jeff Cobb and the Great O'Karn doing with AEW. But <clears throat> Jeff Cobb and the Great O'Karn have regained those tag titles, the IWGP tag titles, and are now two-time champs after Jeff Cobb hit Chase Owens with a tour of the islands, his finisher. So it was just really good to see uh, Great O'Karn and Jeff Cobb get the tag titles back. You know, I felt like this would have been a good time to kind of, I guess get those belts back on them. And I hope they have a legitimate run. I think they are capable of having a legitimate run as tag champs. So, hopefully those titles won't get hot potatoed again. So, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, we had the AEW Interim Championship Elimination Match. Hiroki Goto versus the Ace. Hiroshi Tanahashi. And while this was a very good match, I mean, these two have always put on awesome matches. And as much as I would have loved Hiroki Goto to win, we all knew that wasn't going to happen. I mean, it's the ace. And I mean, Tanahashi is the bigger draw. And sure enough, after a high fly flow, gets the victory over Goto. So now, the match at Forbidden Door has been set. It will be John Moxley versus Hiroshi Tanahashi for the AEW Interim Championship. So, Moxley's gonna get the ace. This should be good, though. This should be really, really good. But yeah, that, that match is set. <clears throat> But it was a really good match, though. Really good match. But I'm going to get the ace and Death Rider at Forbidden Door. Should be good. Uh, we had the KOPW 2022 Championship Trophy on the line as Shingo Takaki defended the trophy against Taichi. Now, this was another one of those matches that had a uh, pretty much whoever could get the most counts by when time expires wins. So when you go for a pin and the referee is counting, the number of times he hits the mat equals a point. Final score ended up being 11 to 10 Shingo. It was very, very close, and Taichi almost, almost got in a last-second pen attempt, but time expired, 
and Shingo Takaki retains the trophy. 11 to 10. It was actually a really good match. And, you know, these two, these two have been putting on quite a show. So, I'm definitely happy for this match. Um, I could say it was definitely, you know, in my top four matches that I enjoyed at Dominion. I thought, I thought this was really good. <clears throat> Pardon me. Because typically, I'm usually not that much into the KOPW matches. But this one I actually enjoyed. I actually enjoyed. Okay, we had the Never Open Weight Championship on the line. As Tamatanga made his first defense against the machine gun, Carl Anderson. And of course, while Tamatanga had Jado, Carl Anderson had, of course, his tag team partner, Dot Gallows. And of course, these two are back and forth. Uh, this match told a really good story between these two. A lot of history. A lot of history. Um, good match. Some gun stuns here. A uh, Bernard driver there. Um, got to see quite a bit. But sure enough. <clears throat> sure enough. The machine gun Carl Anderson was able to capitalize. Hit a gun stun. Get the one, two, three. And Carl Anderson is your new never open weight champion. Oh, by the way, I was also really happy to see them put his um, uh, intro back in. You know, his his announcer intro back in. The ch -ch 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 -ch. I, I, I like how they did that with Carl Anderson. I miss that. I miss that. <clears throat> but congratulations to him on getting the Never Open Weight Championship. We also had the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship on the line. As even though Juice Robinson, you know, refused to vacate it and, you know, they didn't legit have the championship there, they still called this match and it made this match official. So it was uh, Sonata against Will Ospreay. And it was a very excellent match. Very excellent match. Uh, definitely back and forth. <clears throat> and I just really love the chemistry these two had in the ring. For sure. Uh, my second favorite match of the card. And sure enough, Will Ospreay was able to pull it off. Hit a nasty hidden blade. Hit a storm breaker. Got the one, two, three. So, I do wonder how they're going to, like, what they're going to do. Because, you know, Juice Robinson had an appendicitis. But, you know, was ordered to pretty much relinquish, vacate, you know, was stripped of the title. Even though they didn't have the title there. Will Ospreay is the new IWGP United States Champion. So, just look forward to that. But it was an excellent match. It was an excellent match. Main event was for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. <clears throat> as Kazichika Okada, Rainmaker, made his defense against Switchblade Jay White. And, of course, Gato is in Switchblade's corner. Of course, there were some shenanigans. But, for the most part, this was a hard-hitting banger of a match. The main event, for sure. 
and was a long match. Uh, I think it went the whole 30 minutes or, or longer. And it was excellent. Sure enough, a couple of exchanges. But eventually, Jay White caught Okada with a Blade Runner to get the 1-2-3. And Switchblade Jay White, the leader of Bullet Club, is your new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. <clears throat> and I have to say, there was a couple of things that stood out. So, of course, one, uh, the Bullet Club came down to the ring to celebrate. House of Torture wasn't there. Y'all y'all notice that? Those that watched, y'all notice House of Torture didn't come by and join in on the celebration. So I think, I don't know if this is just, if it's safe to say this, but I'm pretty sure House of Torture is going to break off into their own thing. No more subunit under Bullet Club. They're just, they're going to be their own thing. I think it's only a matter of time if it hasn't happened by now that House of Torture is going to be their own thing. So, but Bullet Club came down to celebrate and Jay White in the ring and also backstage had an inferno level promo. I mean, shots fired at Brian Danielson, Hangman Adam Page. I mean, of course, Okada, like mentioned Britt Baker, Adam Cole, like Kenny Omega. Like he mentioned so many, but to Hangman, he was like, you want Okada? You want Okada? You can have him because you're never getting this. And what he said was, was true. He um, has a 2-0 record, a 2-0 record against Hangman. He's never lost to Hangman. So, <clears throat> we'll have to see what happens. But this is now the era of the Switchblade. And he is back on top. Bullet Club, in general, shots fired at AEW. Who knows, y'all? This could lead into Bullet Club invading AEW. We'll have to see how that goes. We'll have to see how things go once Kenny Omega returns with all this potentially blowing up. It's exciting. It's very exciting. <clears throat> so I'm definitely looking forward to... To seeing what happens, how this goes with Jay White as IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. And, you know, I'm pretty sure we're going to see see him at uh, Forbidden Door. And just, like I said, I ex what, what was said in that promo, I expect Bullet Club to invade for Forbidden Door in some way, shape, or form. I expect Will Ospreay and, and United Empire to be part of Forbidden Door in some way, shape, or form. So there's a lot to look forward to. It's definitely exciting. <clears throat> and the entrance for the G1 Climax 32 have been announced. It will be 28, 28 competitors in four blocks of seven. That's right. No, no A block, no A block, B block. There's going to be four blocks of seven. <coughs> this is exciting. This is so exciting. Let's run down the competitors. And and by the way, this is the first. Four block tournament since Kensuke Sasaki emerged from the 20 man field in 2000. So, wow. So, the year 2000 was the last time they did a four block tournament. So, this, this is big. But, yeah, let's, let's take a look at the, the 28. 
we got um, we got Kazuchika Okada making his 11th in entry into this tournament, 11th consecutive entry as well. And remember, Okada has won the G1 Climax three times in 2012, 2014, and 2021. That's right, he did win it last year. Hiroshi Tanahashi making his 21st entry and consecutive entry into the G1. And he's also a three-time winner. He won it in 2007, 2015, and 2018. Tetsuya Naito making his 13th entry slash 13th consecutive entry into this tournament. He's won it twice. He's won it in 2013 and 2017. <clears throat> Hiroki Go Hiroki Goto making his 15th consecutive entrance. And he won the G1 one time. He won it back in 2008. Tamatanga uh, making his fifth entry, uh, his second consecutive entry into this tournament. Shingo Takaki making his fourth entry, fourth consecutive entry into this tournament. We got Chase Owens making his second entry in second consecutive. We got Yujiro Takahashi making his ninth entry, his third consecutive. We have Evil making his seventh entry slash seventh consecutive entry into this tournament. <clears throat> making his debut, Filthy Tom Lawler. Now that's that's quite interesting. That's an interesting ad, but Filthy Tom Lawler is in <coughs> excuse me. Is in this tournament for the first time. Looking forward to that. So yeah, good to see good to see him in this tournament. Alright. Juice Robinson. Uh, making his fifth entry, uh, this is his first one in two years, which I hope that still goes as planned. I know he had a appendicitis, and I hope he'll be ready by that time, which I think he will be. <clears throat> Another one making his debut, Jonah is making his debut into the G1, so that that's another big one as well. Can't wait to see how he does. Yoshihashi, making his sixth entry and third consecutive. Uh, Toriyano, making his 17th entry, 16th consecutive. The Stone Pitbull, Tomohiro Ishii, making his 10th entry, 10th consecutive. Jeff Cobb, making his fourth entry, fourth consecutive. The Great Okarn making his second entry, second consecutive. Will Ospreay, the aerial assassin, making his, thir his third entry, his first one in two years. And making his debut, which I'm kind of surprised this is, this is his debut, but uh, Aaron Hanare will be entering the G1 Climax for, for the first time. I thought he had been in one before. But no, apparently this is his first one. So, another debut. <clears throat> Sonata. Cold Skull Sonata will be making his seventh entry, seventh consecutive. Switchblade Jay White will be making his fourth entry, his first one in two years. Kenta. Kenta will be making his fourth en entry, fourth consecutive. Uh, another one making his debut entry into this tournament, El Fantasmo. We're used to seeing him in the Best of Super Juniors, but he is now entering his first G1 Climax. Taichi making his fourth entry, fourth consecutive. Zack Sabre Jr. making his sixth entry, sixth consecutive. <coughs> Excuse me. Lance Archer making his sixth entry, and his first in three years. And finally, making his debut entry, Dave 
Finley, David Finley. So wow, we got we got a couple of, of debuting competitors. We got one, two, three, four, five, five, five uh, new attendees for this. But yeah, this is looking to be a very stacked G1 Climax. I can't wait. G1 Climax 32. Which, um, let me see. Let me look at the dates for it. It starts uh, July 16th. And will go all the way to August 18th. So August 18th. Looks like will be the finals. But yeah. The, the, the list of competitors is quite stacked. <clears throat> but yeah. Four block round robin tournament. Should be fun. Should be really fun. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to point out. That I forgot to mention. Zack Sabre Jr. <clears throat> called out. The American Dragon, Brian Danielson. Now, let me tell you what. I would love to see Zack Sabre Jr. versus Brian Danielson. Might as well book it for Forbidden Door. Tony Khan, I hope you're listening. I hope you've been paying attention. But that's a match you need to book for Forbidden Door later this June. So... Yeah, you, you need to book that. You need to book that. But now that Dominion is in the books, uh, actually, let's see what the schedule looks like for New Japan Pro Wrestling. <clears throat> uh, you got the you got New Japan Road that's starting up. Uh, actually, starts up this week, Thursday. June 16th. So they're doing the tour for that. And that goes up to uh, July 5th. You got uh, NJPW Strong Ignition uh, next Sunday in Hollywood, California. And then you got and then you got Forbidden Door June 26th, Sunday. <clears throat> then the G1 Climax 32 starts in July, July 16th, runs to August 18th. And then, of course, NJPW Strong, high alert, which I'll, I'll be at that show. That'll be in Charlotte, uh, Sunday, July 24th. Looking forward to that. And, yeah, that's pretty much what they have so far. And, and like I said, in one of their press conferences... <clears throat> they announced the New Japan Pro Wrestling Stardom collaboration show, which will be uh, November 20th. They'll have a combined card, which that's history making in itself. So I'm, de I'm definitely looking forward to that show. NJPW Stardom collab. I mean, we've already been hearing talks about like combinations maybe like Mayu Iwatani teaming up with the with the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi or Utami Hayashishita teaming up with Okada like you know maybe we'll get Saya Kamitani teaming up with Kota Ibushi or going against Kota Ibushi shoot I'd be okay with either but yeah I'm definitely looking forward to that show. But, um, yeah, that'll do it for this video. And definitely let me know what y'all's thoughts were on uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion. What did y'all think of the show? What did y'all think of the matches, the outcomes? And, uh, yeah, let me know what y'all think. Uh, what do you think about the G1 Climax 32 Entrance. Do you like the list? List of 28. Four blocks of seven. 
looks pretty pretty stacked but yeah let me know what y'all's thoughts are like comment subscribe don't forget don't forget to hit that notification bell and thank you so much for watching um this has been another um another excuse me I almost messed up another pro wrestling talk brought to you by blitzball champ gaming here on the u to the tube I'm your host, Blitzball Champ, Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed week, and I will catch you on the next video. Take care, God bless, and peace.